Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Cornbread dressing and cranberry sauce. Yes, I did it for the culture. Guys, this is a much longer recipe than normal, but I promise you it is totally worth it. I wanted to do some kind of soul food for Black History Month and what better soul food than dressing and cranberry sauce. I like to add the saute vegetables to my dressing because I know that I don't like the dressing vegetables to be too crunchy. So when you saute them, that allows them to get soft. I also use that opportunity to season them with onion powder, garlic powder, and black pepper. Meanwhile, while the vegetables are sauteing, I check my chicken broth to make sure that it's going fine. And I see that it's going just fine. Since the chicken broth is going fine and we've already sauteed the vegetables, now we can take this opportunity to make the cranberry sauce. It's fairly simple, water, sugar, and cranberries. I always tell people add equal parts cranberry and equal parts sugar. So if you use one cup of cranberry, you want one cup of sugar. Once the cranberries are boiling, they will start to pop you will notice a popping noise. It sounds almost like popcorn. And you want the berries to pop. And that is a part of the process which allows you to check out how the cranberries are going. And then of course you can press down the cranberries to your personal preference. You can also um, allow them to stay as berry as I say as possible. That way they will have the consistency that you like for your cranberry sauce. You'll see that the berries have started to pop and what I did was press them because I like some berries in my cranberry sauce but I like it to be more quote saucy so I do press down the cranberries just to get a saucier feel and from there once they're done I place it into a glass dish and allow it to cool as they cool the sauce will thicken just like the jelly that you're used to in the can now this was the best part at this point the meat was falling off the bone and so that's how I definitely knew that it was ready to make the foundation to any cornbread dressing is of course the cornbread so I had already made the cornbread and it was cool and so I took that opportunity to crumble it up when the cornbread is as cool as it can possibly get you do not want it to be warm it will perfectly crumble up just so you can use it for your dressing for me I do not like using Jiffy Mix. I make the regular cornbread that you get, um, and then I take that opportunity to also pull apart the meat. For purposes of this recipe, I did pull apart the meat when it was hot, but I don't like doing it. It was very hot to the touch, so I went as fast as I possibly could and pulled apart some of the chicken to include in the dressing. I like to pull apart just the dark meat because it's more fattening and that is what I add to the cornbread. I also add cream of celery because it is wonderful for the thickening process. At this point, you're going to also add your seasonings as well as your diced vegetables. 
I tell people do not add the broth too soon. You will add it almost one cup at a time just so you know that the dressing is not too soupy and not too moist. This is all about consistency. So I am getting the broth from the chicken that I had already boiled with the vegetables and that is why it is perfectly ready to be mixed in. You can continue to add the broth until it is what I like to call soupy. At that point, I add in my preferred seasonings as well as I use sourdough bread. Some people like to use a stuffing mix. For my personal preference, I don't like using stuffing mix because I cannot control the seasonings or how powerful the seasonings are. So I like to use bread because I can add in my own seasonings. But when you use those pre-stuffing uh, mixes, you can't necessarily control the seasonings. I usually like to do sourdough bread or as they say, weak old bread. You can definitely use a bread that is more thick than normal but this is not a recipe for your brioche or anything like that you want to use some thicker bread like sourdough as you can see the sourdough started to soak up a lot of the broth and that is perfect because that is the consistency that you're looking for you're going to continue to add the bread you can definitely toast the bread if you want to and what I love about this process is you can always fix it if you've done too much so there's been times when I've added a little bit too much bread and sometimes a little bit too much broth and I allowed the bread or the broth to offset any issues that I might have had that is why you're not going to add all of the broth at one time or all of the bread at one time because you want to have that perfect mix and that perfect consistency. I baked my dressing in my cast iron skillet. I did not use that full amount but I did make enough for purposes of this recipe and I placed it in the oven and as you can see the sides were bubbling and it was all good to go. I do like to check the top of the consistency to make sure that it's cooked throughout and that it's very soft to the touch but not too firm. And here we go guys. I pulled it apart just so you can see that it is completely done throughout but it is nice and moist but also done and that is how you make your old school dressing and of course you cannot have dressing without your cranberry sauce so I of course had added the cranberry sauce it was ready in a few hours and I ate the two together and it was everything that you would imagine it to be I felt like this was a perfect recipe for Black History Month there is nothing that says soul food like dressing. Leave a comment below and let me know if you tried the recipe or if you plan to try it and what you like to eat with your dressing and cranberry sauce. Of course, make sure you subscribe to the page and leave me a thumbs up. I love to hear from you. Bye.